Hey old friends, and welcome to the final match of the first round of the Legendary Remnant Tournament. This matchup features Frequency Rising and Lollygagging Sweet Roll, all one word. Lollygagging Sweet Roll's first list is an assassin list with a nice flowing curve. Looks to be more mid-range, again with a little bit of top end there, but mostly trying to get that damage in early. One of the unique things about this, there's a lot of one-ofs, a la Karakonzul's method of building a deck. So we've got one of Breton Conjurer, one of Blighted Werebat, one of Prankster Mage, Stune Smuggler. These are all one-ofs. At the same time, we are seeing three copies of cards like Sixth House Amulet, which is refreshing. Don't see that one very often. Very excited to see how this assassin list does. The second deck is a token mage list, much more aggressive in nature, lots of two drops to get that pressure on the board early and, and keep pushing. It does have a pretty solid curve, one through five, and then we jump up to seven and ten for the closing cards. See a little bit of outliers here, like Voice of Balance and Renowned Legate, or Legate, not entirely sure how you say it. Can't be that renowned if I don't know how to say his name, but that's neither here nor there. It's fresh, it's fun, and I can't wait to see it in action. Lollygagging Sweet Roll's third deck changes it up quite a bit. It is Conscription Control in Guild Sworn Colors. We're seeing a lot of the common elements that you would see in a Conscription list, but it also features Journey to Sovngarde. Not many players have made the Journey to Sovngarde as of late, so it's exciting to see it in the deck and to see what could happen if that's able to snowball and build into the late game. And as fate would have it, Frequency Rising decided they did not want to go on that Journey to Sovngarde either, and so they put the axe to that third deck. We will not see Guild Sworn in this matchup. Frequency Rising's first offering is a Slay Warrior, and it has all the trappings you would expect, the pings and the squish the wimpies. Also does have cards like Falkreath Defiler, though, that you haven't seen in a long time, ever since his nerf. Granted, it's only one copy, but he's in there. A Little Girl, also a card you don't see terribly often. Similar to some of Lollygagging Sweet Roll's decks, this also features a lot of one of, so you never really know what's gonna hit the board, even if you have the deck list, so it keeps things exciting. The second deck is your quintessential New Era Empire deck. It's got all the removal, the guards, and the drain to push the game into those later turns where cards like Marak and Aelid Guardian can really pull things in your favor. The main difference in this deck is similar to the last one. It has a lot of one ofs, so he has a lot of tools to work with, a lot of ways he can go with any particular turn. You don't really know what to expect or when the hammer will fall. And deck three is Control Telvanni. Similar to the last deck, has a lot of tools to be able to use. While there are many threats on the list, the Aelid Guardians are the star of the show. If they're left on board for more than a turn, cards like Tinkering, Doppelganger, and Experiments can transform them into greater monstrosities or replicate them ad nauseum and completely lock down a game beyond all semblance of hope. After careful consideration, Lollygagging Sweet Roll did not like the look of the Empire Control list, and so Frequency Rising will be bringing the Warrior and Telvanni lists into the fray. So those are the lists, these are the players, let's get into the final games of Round 1. Jumping into the first match, here we go, looks like we've got Lollygagging Sweet Roll, I might just have to say Sweet Roll or Lollygagging, we'll have to see how that goes, uh, just to keep things simple and so I don't uh, run, run my mouth here. Running a... Mage list against Frequency Rising's Warrior list. Now, fair, full disclosure, I have, even though the, the intro makes it seem like I actually know the deck list, I haven't seen all of them yet. Uh, this is kind of very impromptu at the last minute. Greatly appreciate both players uh, being here and, and able to play. So we are seeing what looks to be... I mean, when you see the, the two little guys here, uh, the grunts... What are they called? Imp yeah, Imperial Grunts. When you see them, it's really hard not to think of this being as a aggressive list. Wardcrafter, come out there and give the 1-1, one, one, keep him alive, I'm guessing. Yeah. And they have seen each other's deck list now. They, they only got them just a few minutes beforehand, so they, they haven't had a chance to look over them. They're just kind of going, uh, probably, they, they had just enough time to look and to ban a deck, but not really a whole lot of time to examine them and figure out the ins and outs and exactly what they got going, but so it's presumably, uh, what we're going to see is, um, ooh. All right, so Divine Fervor is not going to come down. I thought that might get played. It would buff him up to a 4-4, four, four, but chances are the Venom Tongue is going to try to trade with a lesser creature. It wouldn't, it wouldn't take out the 4-4. The four, four. But now it will require a double trade. Oh, the crossbow. So this is probably a version of... Oh gosh, yeah, we've got Falkreath Defiler. This is this is definitely a... Uh, the, gosh, the, the, the resurrection. Um, like, this is classic 
kind of classic warrior before the the three the three houses were a thing this is kind of what what you ran with granted back then your your defiler was able to once he slay once he slayed he was able to bring the cards uh the slay targets onto the board immediately they didn't go to his hand they went onto the board kind of broken when you started looking at all the different uh ways they had to to buff black and sweet were losing their support does have another one but also no board got frequency rising down to 17 which is respectable uh, unfortunately this is kind of a rough matchup we may we may see a different outcome next game whoever wins this one only because you know these are these are tokens going against cards with ping effects granted doesn't matter how how buff your your creatures are if you've got venom tongue on the board shooting with crossbow that's not going to get much done let's see what a uh, little girl might come down here and if it did she is going to survive as it stands now uh, just to get himself out of out of uh, danger danger range. I mean 17 is not exactly back against the wall but uh, maybe he wants to to draw some more uh, lollygagging pretty much the the big the big push is going to be supreme Matchmaster. it's always nice to have a big a big card in the in your hand I mean it's definitely early but against a more or less control list, which is what I think we're seeing for Frequency Rising. Yeah, it's kind of nice to have that in the back end. You're not going to be drawing. You know you've got more than just your, your dead cards to draw. But holy cow, uh, Frequency Rising assembling quite a board there. Three ones, trade, kills off the douche. Five three takes out the one one. And he's going to get rid of Venom Tongue. We might see Grave Grasp here. Oh no, gonna leave. Okay. It says, hey, we don't uh, we don't need to worry about it. Frequency rising. I don't know. I haven't had a chance to look. I'm not sure if um oh, the big the um, Unstoppable Rage. I don't know if that's in the deck. It's not in hand right now, so it's kind of a moot point. Um obviously does have breakthrough. Blood Magic Lord would be appealing. Holy cow, there's been a lot of ramps. Sometimes you just, you know, you're looking at a bunch of stuff you don't see it. Blood Magic Lord able to drain life. That is probably, against an aggro deck like this, that is probably the best best he could have drawn. Uh, d no ping effects, no squish the wimpies, no way to change anything. Gives uh, Lollygagging a card. Uh, probably not what he wanted to do, but uh, if all you got is breakthrough, you got to use your big breakthrough. And little girl, uh, still really no answer for her. Divine fervor and sen uh, well, sentinel reclaimer with the ring could get you one more damage. What do you got? Seven, thirteen. Oh, don't, don't, don't miss it. Sentinel reclaimer, and there you go. Wow, gonna be just enough. Just enough magic. Oh, holy cow. What? Wow, just as frequency was beginning to stabilize. Jumping into game two, lollygagging up 1-0, and now has to win with an assassin list, which looks like it's probably going to be mid-range to... I'm, I'm going to say mid-range. I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to commit to that. Frequency Rising is uh, going to go ahead and try to win with the Warrior deck again, not not wanting to bring out the... Uh, well, I don't know. At this point, I don't know which one has been banned by either, either player, so I'm not sure if it was uh, the Telvanni list or another one. Uh, I hadn't seen them all myself. Follow the gang with a little bit of advantage. Um, I mean, again, they've seen each other's deck lists, but has now played this deck, knows what, what it needs to do to win. Wouldn't call this low to the ground aggro by any sense, uh, by any stretch, but it definitely, uh, definitely has taken a very aggressive posture. We'll see what frequency can do here. I, I need to, I need to start switching. I do apologize. I'll start switching, um, so that you're seeing it from different perspectives each game. I keep forgetting to do that, but next round, next round, it'll be alternating games so that you can see different players' perspectives here. The douche. I missed it. I was flapping my gums. I missed the douche's great entrance there. It's going to be a favorable trade and 6-3. Oh, and the ward. 
And that might be it right there. That might be it on turn four. Uh, it's, it's, it swings like that. It's plays like that. I'll do what I can. Frequency Rising is getting, and that's going to be huge. Uh, I don't think there's going to be a silence here. Not only is that going to prevent 6-3 from going in. Uh, let's see. I mean, Tome off. Okay. I was going to say Tome on 6-3 would have enabled a trade there as well, but going to go straight in for the 6-3. Frequency Rising got a ton of ramp off of that, though, and that may be, may be ultimately what is needed in order to to stabilize. We'll see though. 13 points on the damage. You got lethal right now. 3-3 three, three comes down. Is going to take out the mage. She's done a heck of a lot of work in, in these few turns. Leaves a 7 on board. We know... Okay, just kidding. Leaves 2 on board. And that was pretty much the answer. That's that's what the balance, the balancing act is. Uh, oof. Molly Gagan drawing right into I'm um, almost on curve and Kano hey, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough one um and see these are not these are not what you want to see little girl maybe but we know we know ancano has got five for next turn so unless blood magic Lord gets plus five or shackle what does he get it gets the gargoyle uh, that might that might stave it off as well and Kano hits no nope. okay he's gonna just go in and is Lollygagging going to... Ah, oh, it's going to shackle. Okay, so shackle. Choosing not to play on Kano there and instead make it a virtually impossible for the, the Blood Magic Lord to, uh, to get another spell. He does have a crossbow, but... So Archmane, uh, Venom Tongue and crossbow might come down. Oh my goodness gracious! That is a big play. Oh, and he overdraws Drain Life, and Encano is going to do it. Wow! I mean, uh, Frequency Rising couldn't have, couldn't have, uh, couldn't have played well the the Drain Life anyway. It was one magic off of that, but boy, that oh, and he had another one anyway. So it, it was very close. Decides to go a different route other than Encano, I guess, just to to skip that rune break. Very well played. And we get a bonus here. Frequency Rising and Lollygagging decided they were going to go ahead and play a third game with each of their banned decks just to see what would happen. And so we're going to jump in and spectate. They were already a few turns in, but they let me know, hey, we're we're playing this, so going to see what, what might have been with the decks that each one decided they didn't want to see from the other one, which is a great take. That's something maybe we'll introduce into other tournaments if, if people are willing to, if everybody feels good afterward, whether you won or lost. If people want to see like, okay, what would have happened, you know, if, if I went against your ugly and you went against my ugly, let's let's see what would have went down. So, oh, and I, uh, tell you what, let me, mm, let me, let me do what I said I was going to do. I'm going to jump out real quick and I'm going to jump in on Lollygagging's side. Wait, no, Frequency Rising side. There we go. Sorry about that. I just I wanted to get it right at least once. We did miss a turn, it looks like, but like I said, I want to try to try to mix things up. And doesn't look like we missed too much. I mean, th these these games are actually seem to be th a little more evenly matched than the previous two. Soldiers, form up. But who knew? Your worst nightmare, my worst nightmare. They come together and uh, makes for a great matchup. I am. So this is obviously a control. Control deck. I, if I'm not mistaken, wow. Mechanards will yoink, he says. And I'm a little late on the cast of that. I smell the I'm glad I didn't log off. Uh, this, this is going to be a treat here. Some bonus material, if you will. There's a plan. There's always they a plan. Defeat the it could be a long one. So we're seeing some prophecies from Lollygagging. Holly gagging. I don't want to do that. I mean, piercing javelins. Uh, this fellow, Black Sap, you don't usually see him unless it's a, um, I mean, a prophecy in intensive list. Although, with Tullius's conscription, I mean, he wouldn't come down for that. I just, I don't know that this is a prophecy deck. It looks like it would also be a, um, a control, a control-ish deck. 
Frequency rising, holding the upper hand because it's a much bigger hand at the moment. A little bit more of a board fire. presence. Actually, without a significant presence, I mean, it's still going to allow a double trade with the smell of the living Pharaoh no Stalker gal. The Broom of Profiteer, we're seeing, I tell you what, that, that Praetorian Commander, It's it can be a momentum killer, depending on when you play her, but uh, you, you get it at the right time and, and the rest of your deck just looks magnificent. And you can't, It's not like, you know, you can't remove the support. Once it's in there, it's in there. There's no card that banishes that effect from the deck. So, it, you know, it's a really, really good thing to have in there. I don't know if it's only the province of... Okay, it's trying to, once, once to keep the 1-1 one, one alive, that Viper alive. Not for the charge. I mean, it doesn't have Mentor's Ring or anything, but uh, maybe just for a bigger threat. Frequency making a huge push here, despite the buffed creatures coming down. What have we here? Broomer Profiteer. Getting some life. And who's this guy again? Feasting Hunger. Also getting some drain. So Lollygagging hanging in there, swinging back around. Uh, Aelid Guardian, though, is probably going to be the death now. Although, it is turn 10, and Lollygag is sitting on two Piercing Javelins. That is uh, an uncommon uh, bit, of, bit of luck there, and will clear the board. Frequency Rising does have a uh, you know, much... Chimera, spirit of the sky. Oh! You will die where you stand. Interesting... Interesting. Um, okay, that, that took me by a little bit by surprise. I'm not entirely sure. I would think, uh, especially with uh, fr uh, Frequency, I'm guessing, has... Well, it doesn't have the shenanigans of uh, of intelligence. Uh, that's, not, <laughs> that's not an insult there. I'm talking about the actual attributes. doesn't have that to work with. So, it's... Okay, maybe maybe that was it. Just now, I don't know if Lollygagging realizes that the Thieves Guild wouldn't isn't a kill. Uh, but either way, two guards in that lane and shackles that does change things quite a bit. Immolating blast, though. Holy cow! I need to be a little bit faster. That is a heck of a blow. And that may be it. I mean, we, we see another Tullius Conscription sitting in hand. I don't know how big of an impact that will be. And I don't know if it's going to be able to stop everything that's coming down here. If it gets two more shackles. Because again, that 3-3, three, three, that's lethal, is not going to kill the 8-5. So we'll see what Tullius' Conscription can conscript. Or what Tullius can conscript. Or, or, <laughs> Lollygagging could completely fool me and try something else. We do see that there's two Mummifies frequency he has in hand, so guards are not going to do it unless there are at least two in each lane. Three in each lane, actually. Okay, the Viper is going to drain for a little bit and kill the 8-2, not because of lethal, just because it's a big old Viper. Okay. Oh, but we do know it's going to be exact. Oh, no! Would have been exact lethal. Would have been exact lethal. But that drain coming in because uh, she can mummify the 3 5. Going for 7. Oh, and Odor and Necromancer are going to bring back the giant bat. Do we have bats? I'm pretty sure we saw bats. We saw bats. Wow. Well done. Well done. And our combatants are back. Now, again, this is not necessarily a tournament, but people like to watch games, so this is another bonus game. I'm not sure exactly. I'll have to look at the deck lists. <laughs> Forgive me. I'll have to check the deck lists and see if these were just matchups that we didn't see, because Frequency Rising never played this one. We know his Empire was banned. We never got to see this one in the actual game, because he just played the Warrior both times. So I think we're seeing... And Lollygagging... Well, I'm not sure what this one is, so... 
I don't know, I'll have to sort it out afterwards, but I'm just excited we're gonna get to see another game from our two our two players for this for this match. I think it's a lot of fun to see. You know, the the what what ifs and what could have been's. Okay, so Lollygagging just let said that <laughs> that this is a deck that he chose not to bring to the game. So it wasn't it wasn't on the list. We have Ungolum staring down a ancestor. Yeah, vigilant ancestor. I mean, vigilance is one thing, but how useful is vigilance if you're chained to the floor? Like, it's like you can be vigilant anyone. It's like I see you. I see you breaking in. I see you destroying property. I see you doing all. I'm very vigilant. I'm seeing it all. I just can't do a squad about it. Ungolum is going to sacrifice for the greater good. Rising of Bones. It's not a great matchup there, but oh goodness gracious, Dres Renegade coming down. I haven't seen that. You know what? How have I never thought of that? Congrat, you know, uh, kudos to Lollygagging. I have run, how many times have you seen me run my, oh, but the Ice Storm says, I don't care about your inventiveness. Get off my board. Uh, but that's great. I mean, you, you've seen, I've run the, in the Warrior, I believe. It's the uh, Silence and Violence. You know, and I'm always looking for Silence to do it. But uh, Drez Renegade comes in really great there. I think that was that was probably the, 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 the best you could expect, especially in a three-attribute deck. I mean, you can play the whole game and never have him show up. We've got more Bones Rising. And the great thing about them in this particular situation is they they cannot be banished by Black Dragon because they're an action, not a not an actual creature, so they're not going to get banished from the deck. I've got this. small consolation, but again, we're here. We are again, turn seven, turn eight, and they are still tightly moving together. And Ice Storm doing more work. Lollygag not not short. Oh. Oh, that's rough. That is rough. East March, that is the saddest of East March. You know, he's bleeding. He's bleeding, but he's like, as long as I get a draw card, I'm okay. But boy, taking a, taking a wound like that, taking one for the team and not being able to draw a card, that's that does hurt. And one, one point away as well. Seems to indicate that this is, uh, for Lollygag, this is a... Oh! Yeah. Yeah, so this is, he calls it the jail, Jailhouse Rock, I believe. Yeah, Jailhouse Rock, and for obvious reasons, it's great. It's it's breaking it's breaking people out of of their their shackled uh, their their shackled uh, condition. Nice try. Going face there. So you the next his next plan. one will his next um, Crusader will be able to draw a card. But yoinking Lyneth, and as we know, he's got ways to free her. So that is a that that is a, that arrest is more dangerous than before. In fact, we see he's sitting on mute. So Lyneth, but Blackhand Messenger, he sees all. He crushes him with stuff, and Frequency Rising getting some important information here. Whoops! That Lollygagging is sitting on absolutely no creatures. As crazy as that seems. That was a mistake. Uh, it wasn't a mistake, Frequency. It's, I mean, really, you can't expect if somebody's sitting on five cards, you wouldn't think that none of them are are creatures. And do we do we get we finally get one here? We still don't have one. Uh, so if he doppelgangers it, which I don't think he is, I think I think we're gonna see a Yelled Guardians come down, and maybe a doppelganger next turn. But these are these are the backbone of the deck. Uh, the Guardians, they are they are powerful. We did see uh, in the last game. Uh, Lollygagging had uh, the answers, the the two the two removals, uh, javelins. But yet you almost never see that. You almost you can't ever remove both of them. You're gonna you can only do one at a time, unless you get lucky with a wide board and uh, and you're running um, emulating blast. Otherwise, no good. But Lollygag does have. Okay, and it wants to force a trade. The Guardian with... Oh, and the other Guardian comes down, and boy, well that Doppelganger. Must I do everything myself? 
That is, and and then Bear's always tinkering. Yep, that's. Uh, I know frequencies. One of his favorite things is uh, is using that uh, because it is so powerful. As you see, as it buffs them right up. Are they both gonna be two Atronachs? No, Parthenax. But really, you, <laughs> you're not complaining at this point. So yeah, if uh, if you're playing against this deck and you let it go too late into the rounds, um, you know this is, I believe. Yeah, this is the deck that I ran, I believe, earlier in the uh, in the week, and you saw even even when I was in my gooberishness, was still able to do very well. It's a very potent deck, particularly in the late game, and it gets in the late game pretty often thanks to cards like Black Hand Messenger. So Lolly Gang Sweet Roll, probably. I mean, Mighty Conjuring. Oh, that's so that's so hard to see. It would have moderate efficacy here. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be a swing. Does frequency rising have lethal? Has exact? Well, a little more than exact lethal. So, uh, especially with that, hit with Parth. Uh, with the Atronach being immune to things like Javelin, uh, it can be saved for the last hit. And frequency is going to close the game out. Oof. Yeah, that, that Telvani list. That is fierce. And with that, Lollygag and Sweet Roll takes the match 2-0 over Frequency Rising in two very close games. As we saw, Lollygag and Sweet Roll just able to slide underneath those bigger control decks on pivotal turns. We were about to see, I think, Frequency Rising really turn those games around in both instances, but Lollygag and Sweet Roll was able to close it out just in the nick of time. Very exciting to watch. Thank you both for playing. Thank you both for being willing to work with me and work with each other. Lollygag and Sweet Roll kind of had to ride the waves for a few days, waiting to figure out exactly who the the opponent was going to be frequency rising i i reached out and asked uh, if you'd be willing to play and he signed on probably 10 or 15 minutes before those games that you saw put his deck list together sent it over the two communicated very nicely got it squared away and then sent me the list so that i could update and everything so thank you both for being willing to kind of be flexible and to just participate in this you made the tournament work we had a full first round now and again very grateful for uh for you guys making that happen and also for the the addition of those exhibition games uh, which i think i might include or ask uh, if people want to include uh in, in future games you know you have that those band list you know the, i don't want to mess with that deck i think it's interesting to see that what if story when it doesn't necessarily count towards the tournament and fortunately frequency rising was was you know happy to do it sometimes you know if you come off a loss you may not want to you know, do it anymore, but was very amicable to give it another shot. And we saw uh, that the band uh, deck do, 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 do. <laughs> band decks do very, very well. Anyway, thank you very both very much. That concludes round one. And as of now, these are your standings. You see round two will have Kira, also known as Kevin Eisenfost, going up against City Toker, and Lollygag and Sweet Roll will be going against yours truly. And the winner of those will meet in the championship later on this week vying for the coveted crown. Okay, I don't know how coveted it is, but it's a heck of a lot of fun to try to get there. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, keep playing.